They say there'll be a judgment day. But I tell you that every day is judgment day in high school. You're either in or you are out. Oh, you're pretty, right? But are you pretty enough? Good at academics? You're on the honor roll. Principal's honor roll. What about sports? Are you, you, uh, you know, making the varsity team? Uh, well, are you going to make state champs this year? you going to be Division I scholarship full ride? Good. I mean, what, what, are you on the honor band, honor choir, state debate champs? What are you? I'll tell you what you are. It's whatever awkward thing that you've said or done and people are laughing at you and not with you. Oh yeah, it's, it's the constant evaluation of, of teachers and parents and coaches. It's what the girls think of you. It's what the guys think of you. You are either welcomed into the promised land of the liked or cast into the outer darkness of the not good enoughs. Now, you would hope and pray that come your final graduation, be it high school or college, whatever, that you'd finally be done and, and released from all of this yuck. But oh no, it only opens up into a new terrain that's even more foreboding and unforgiving called work and real life. And here it's even, even more higher of an expectation in the, in the getting and then keeping of a good job. In the finding and then being happy with a spouse. In the having and then raising children who turn out to be decent human beings who can make it on their own. <sighs> It is a world full of fussy bosses and cranky customers, uh, next door neighbors and their spouses, your own adult children, all of whom judge you. And the verdict is in. You are not enough. Oh yeah, you've got some successes you can you know, think about, rely on, but it's all in a cloud of, of misty fog of shame as you realize all the other times that you have failed your spouse, your children, your parents, your job, your own dreams, and your God. Yes, we know about Judgment Day because it's every day. But perhaps sweet, sweet death will release our souls from all of this, right? Oh no, no, that's the big one. That's the final judgment. That's when Jesus and all, uh, Jesus and all of his, all of his angels will come. And all that constant guilt that you've lived with and all you've tried to, to deal with simply by, you know, working harder, that self-condemnation and, and maybe just avoiding it by withdrawing and, and doing something, you know, like losing yourself in social media for hours at a time or, or maybe a good hobby or, or just that, that glass of wine that takes off the edge of the day. Well, let me ask you, where does that edge come from? You know, where does the anxiety, the fears, the, the sluggish procrastination and the self-condemnation, where does it come from? It comes from judgment. You are not enough. Just spin the wheel, you know, pick, pick an item. And now Jesus is coming with all of his angels. And he will gather every last man, woman, and child before him, separating on his right and on his left. And when he sits on his glorious throne, making his final judgment, he will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Take your inheritance prepared for you since the creation of the world. And to those on his left, he will say to you, depart from me, you who are cursed, into the fire prepared for the devil and all of his angels. 
And on this last and final judgment, after that, you then experience for all eternity either the blessings or the curses. So on that day, will you be enough? And can you ever know? Well, as you listened carefully to the judge on his throne, he, he did make some comments. You know, he, he did say, well, you fed me, you clothed me, you visited me, and you did not. So perhaps that is some clues, you know, that, that, that maybe we need to pay attention to that. You know, kind of get a checklist, make sure we've done all of the things on the list. And, but, but, but that that cannot be the basis for his final judgment. It's too specific, it's too narrow, it's too small, and quite frankly, neither of the, of the groups on the right or the left had any clue that they had, in fact, served Jesus or had failed to serve Jesus. Listen to them. They both said exactly the same thing. Lord, when did we see you there? So unless you just get dumb lucky, I, I can't see this to be the, the final thing that you get judged on. And in fact, when you really do look at just normal human life, most people in some way, be it small or big, have fed, have clothed, have visited somebody. And when you examine your own life, you realize even all of the visits and all of the care that you've given, you still have not done everything that you could have. You stand before the judge. Are you going to tell him you've done everything? So how can we really know? I mean, that, that just, those comments cannot be the final verdict and, and the reason for the verdict. So the, the best way to really get at this is, is if we could ask the people on the right a few questions and kind of interview them. Because if we could ask those on the right, they might say something like this. They might just share with us that it really didn't matter to them one bit whether it turned out to be Jesus or not. It just, it wasn't their motivation for doing whatever kind or generous thing that they had done they weren't hoping that come judgment day, they filled out the list and they can show it to the judge. No, if you were allowed to listen in to them, they would tell you that this is just how normal life is for me. That any good thing that's happened, it's because I'm with Jesus. And as I'm with him, these are the, the natural, merciful, and kind things that he was leading me to do. For you see, I really can't take credit for any of the good that I've done. He, he has done every good thing through me. He has given me a healthy body, resources, a cheerful spirit, a, a willingness to be generous. He, he gets all the credit because if you were to really look at my full history, and that's what Judgment Day is all about, you will find much that will stand to condemn me. But it is, it is him, it's Jesus, who stood up in the gap of my shortfall. And instead of me being cursed, he, he took the despising, the hatred of people. He is the one who was condemned to hell by God the Father and killed on a cross. See, he did all of this so that I might be enough. So this judgment day, it's no surprise because Jesus, he sought me out and he found me long ago. And having found me, he brought me into the safety of his family. And he has, he's given me this, this God-given faith that truly believes these words from John, that God so loved the world he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God didn't send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. And that whoever, whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. If we could interview them, they would certainly share something very similar to that. 
And so we find then that this, this judgment day is completely out of our hands. And it's in the nail-pierced hands of Jesus who says on this day, whosoever will come, I will not drive away. Whosoever will, I welcome into my Father's kingdom. I clean you up. I forgive all your sins. I call you my beloved, my holy people, my people who will inherit a kingdom that has been prepared for you since the creation of the world. No one is excluded because they haven't checked the whole list. I have checked the list for you. So we find then that this kingdom life with Jesus isn't about having a, a get out of hell free card come judgment day. But this, this kingdom life of Jesus is a present reality in which it makes a lot of difference about high school. And that we're, we're learning in the kingdom then that our value as, as people isn't in our grades or performance or our looks, but in the evaluation of Jesus who says to you, you are my beloved, you are mine. And then, as we've gotten a little older and have entered real life and work, either married or single, with children or no children, retired or working, whatever it is, we're learning from Jesus that, yes, my value is in you, but also my pursuit and my success is in a life that is growing deeper and deeper in commitment and devotion and in love for you, Jesus. And then come that final judgment day when we see him face to face. Do you know the emotion that will be inside of us will be joy. To finally see the one whom we've always believed. Since our baptism, we've always been part of his kingdom. And now, and now it's going to go on and on into great blessing. And so the kind of kingdom life that we live, if you, if you hear yourself, well, I'm just not quite there yet. I mean, I really am, I would, I would like to have that life where Jesus is my value rather than my looks. Then what you do is you pray to the one who's shepherding your soul right now. Jesus, lead me so that you are my ultimate love, my ultimate desire, my ultimate pursuit as I have real life in this real world. And give me an unshakable faith that on that judgment day, it is with great joy that you welcome me into a life that will never end. Jesus gives you that kind of faith, grows you into that kind of life. Amen. I invite